beautiful hibiscus tree outside Papa Ron's. Um, there are his chickens and his dogs. To lead Seriously, up to the election, yeah. it's a public education. Very good. We won't be popular no. with the MPs, but we really couldn't care because they have led us by the nose for yeah. so long. Yeah. Yeah. It's really time we came, yeah, yeah. we stood right. up to it. Eh? Yeah. So um, very few MPs or would-be MPs okay. were there. They are scared of learning, they are mm. scared of hearing, and they think these people at the university, they are up somewhere, they, yeah. they don't read. The political system is rotten. It needs to be changed. Those who are more forward-thinking mm. might be phrasing the question differently, yeah. which is how can we have a productive relationship, yes. a mutually beneficial relationship with China? Yeah, I think Kogans has got things to offer China. Mm. Um, mm. And China has certainly got a lot to offer the Kogans. So, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's like anything, it's, it's structuring the relationship so it works for both parties. Mm. And that's, um, that's our challenge. And it's coming, you know, China's coming whether we like it or not, so yes. we might as well get used to get it. Get prepared. And, yeah, get prepared, prepared and, for and make um, the most of what is going to, you know, it's going mm. to be a major opportunity. Yes. What are the opportunities? Yeah. What are the opportunities? Oh, goodness. Mm. Um, there's uh, opportunities for economic cooperation. Tourism is a major one. Yes. Uh, China's now... Um, one of the major sources of tourists around the world and mm. is, is the fastest yeah. growing. So they are, are, are keen to assist in that regard. Mm. Uh, aviation, you know, we, we live in the middle of the ocean, we have to have mm. aviation links. They've got 32 national airlines. So there's some potential for cooperation in terms of airlines, aviation yes. links. Yeah. Um, some of the biggest uh, builders of public infrastructure in the world uh, you know, they're building multi-billion dollar Complex road, billion. railway systems, yeah. dams, hydro, all around the world. Yeah. And we have infrastructural issues Needs, that they can yeah. assist with. Okay. They're major financiers now, they even finance the US government to a, a very significant degree, so mm. uh, there's that opportunity. Mm. Um, there's educational opportunities for Kogan. Mm. There's some hundreds of Pacific Islanders studying in China now, mm. um, and no Kogan's that I'm aware of, so we probably need to rectify that mm. issue. Mm. Um, there's opportunities for sporting cooperation. Mm. Uh, China's already sent out uh, eight of their, uh, five, sorry, of their Olympic, uh, Olympic coaches. Mm. Happy to help more. Uh, but we're gonna, we've got to try and make that more reciprocal, you know. The Kogan's are stronger than China in rugby union for example. Mm. So maybe we should be assisting them with having their national team come and train with us here. So, you know, there's, there's things like there that. that rather than mm -hmm. sort of always being out with our begging bowl, which is something that really, I think, is wrong about mm. the way that we approach yeah. our international relationships as Cook Islanders, yes. we should be sort of looking more and saying, well, how can we make this work for both parties? And we might, we might not have much to offer, but what, what those things, let's, let's offer those. Mm. So, you know, I think there's a terrific opportunity to work with China to, to construct a, a new model of a successful relationship mm. between a large and a small country. Uh, you know, everybody's got sun and sand and, uh, mm. you know, smiling natives. A point of difference. Exactly. Yeah. What's our point of difference? Our point of difference is it's a very contemporary, cool uh, mm. vibe. Mm. There's a very strong arts and culture uh, vibe to it. Mm. It's uh, it's one big resort, so you can stay at one resort and mm. have uh, mm. dinner at 50 other different restaurants mm. around the island, literally. Um, it's pr unlike most of the South Pacific, we're primarily family owned, very personalised, very small, less commercialised, mm. uh, contrast to other places which tend to have big, <coughs> you know, big resorts, often foreign owned. Nothing wrong with that, but mm. it's just we have a very different place in the it's market. More on the personal level. Yeah. Um, and so the best in the South Pacific in terms of dining, in terms of spa, in terms of uh, entertainment, cultural experiences, eco experiences, light adventure. Mm. And so that's, and we want to be the South Pacific's most unique boutique. Mm. There might be a case there for Kogan's government to set up an insurance company in conjunction with the local and overseas private sector mm. interests, because the insurance costs here are just extraordinary. Um, and the same with shipping. Uh, what we've suggested here is a model of joint ventures between public and mm. private sector mm. to achieve these mm. things. One of the key things, as we, as we said before, if, as long as the Cook Islands has got a $5 minimum wage, New Zealand's 12 and a half, 
and Australia's, Australia's 15, 15, people are going to keep moving. But you can't just sort of wave a magic wand and say, okay, now we're going to have $15 average wage, mm. uh, minimum wage. So what we're saying is we've got to grow, we've got to get the education system in line with the New Zealand system. Mm. So we have at least the same as the average of New Zealand schools in terms of, you know, so we should be right there, at least in the average. So people don't sort of say, well, as a responsible parent, I've got to migrate. Mm. But they can say, well, hang on. They can still remain here. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. And secondly, we need to set up institutes of higher learning within the Quran so that people are doing their degrees, the first degrees, within the Quran. So over time, we have to start to match our minimum wage with New Zealand Australia. Mm. And I, what we're suggesting here is that we move it over 10 years. So in 25 cent increments over a period of time. Mm. And that's really so we can keep Cook Islanders here, attract mm. Cook Islanders back mm. and reduce reliance on foreign workers. I think if you create the conditions mm. uh, where there's not you know, a third world education system, a third world health system mm. in the Cook Islands and low wages, third world wages, uh, if you change that to a first world education system, a first mm. world health system and mm. uh, comparable wages, mm. I think People's. The natural momentum, there'll be a lot of people come back. In fact, mm. we'll have a different problem. We'll have um, yeah. problems of infrastructure, not land tenure. Yeah. Those folks who are growing some of their own food, mm. or predominantly their own food, and doing their own fishing and growing their own chickens and pork, they're probably healthier than the people on $70,000 who are mm. pr primarily eating out of the supermarkets. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, it comes back to fresh, organic, locally grown mm. is going to be better for your health, better for your pocket, better mm. for your family. Mm. That's kind of why you're not doing it. Mm. Okay. We're coming back to addictions. A lot of the things that we're addicted to are the expensive things. So if you're able to free yourself from those addictions, and it's, you know, I'm not saying it's easy, but mm. I'm saying over time, the, the more you can free yourself from those addictions, the better mm. you're going to be uh, health-wise. Not only just your physical health, your mental health, your emotional health, your your spiritual health, mm. uh, all of them run together. Mm. But um, so, yeah, that's kind of uh, some of my thoughts on the subject. Yeah, what I I'd that. really share with people is that uh, we eat too much, eat less, try fasting, you know, at least mm. one day. If you can't do one day, skip one meal, you know, and just drink water mm. uh, and then build up to it slowly. Uh, secondly, eat. You know, it's just like your mother said, eat your fruit and veg. Mm. And make that predominantly your, your source of diet. Mm. Cut out alcohol, cigarettes, dairy, white carbohydrates and uh, sugars. Mm. And you're a long way down the track. And when, if you do eat meats, eat, uh, sparingly. eat sparingly. Mm. And eat fresh if you can. Grow your own chickens and, um, yes. and catch your own fish. Mm. And exercise as much as you can. Yeah. Because it never ceases to amaze me how much exercise the human body is actually designed to need mm. and uh, that's way ahead of what we are doing at the moment. You think a, physical, a physically well-kept body is more in tune spiritually? I believe that, mm. yeah. Mm. I believe that. I think you get congested. I think modern people, myself included, are physically constipated. In other words, we're mm. not processing the uh, the food reading, but also therefore, if that's the case and we're <coughs> blocked in terms of our mm, physical yeah. processing, mm. you've got to assume, and that's been my experience, you're also blocked in terms of your emotional life, in terms of your spiritual life, in terms of your mental life, mm. in terms of your intellectual life. Mm. You know, we're complex interrelated beings. Yeah. So, in the same way, if you, go, if you read an uplifting poem, you mm, feel better, just, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm. And I, what I, I, I have had the experience, you know, you, you go to a, a, an uplifting sermon or you have an uplifting cultural experience or you see some great art, yeah. the next couple of days you feel better, your body functions better. Mm. So it comes the other way too, you know. Mm. But I do believe your physical affects all those other yes. areas. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Mm. Thank you for that. Mm.